Alright, so I just came back from South Korea with my friends and you know I've been actually reading the news as well Not as much as I you, you like to but you know there's a lot of things that I really want to talk about when I actually come back You know I want to talk about Tesla situation, the whole shopping of Tesla I'm pretty sure if you checked out my last video I actually talked about how I was shopping Tesla Made a pretty good amount of money I'm not gonna lie okay I'm pretty happy with my profits uh, Of course I want to talk about SpaceX a little bit um, you know, with the whole explosion of the uh, test run. Uh, but that's not even that juicy because you also have the Chinese Yuan, which is your running B, suddenly just, you know, exceeding uh, cross-border currency usage over the United States dollar. But, but, but we have to talk about First Republic Bank. Okay, because in the entirety of United States bank failure, the top five banks the biggest implosion for banks in the United States. Three of them happened this year. Okay, of course, if you were to exclude the WAMU, would that happen in a way? We are talking about First Republic Bank. Okay, we need to talk about why they actually failed, what was the actual situation, what actually caused all this, and if this would actually become a huge banking crisis that would actually escalate throughout the whole entire economy. So first of all, let's start with the earnings report for First Republic. First Republic actually came out with uh, the earnings report about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, inside the earnings report, they basically said that initial deposits from clients or from outside coming in, all those deposits that actually declined over 40%. It was actually amounting up to about $106 billion dollars. Okay, so something that you have to add on to that with an extra uh, consideration factor is that JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all of them basically kind of just uh, chuck money together and try to save First Republic as a form of the first wave of saving the bank. This actually happened last month, okay, when the Silicon Valley Bank went under, when Signature Bank went under, First Republic Bank was actually down about like 40%. And then the big banks kind of the thing that, you know what, okay, we have to help the regional banks. Otherwise, this banking uh, crisis is going to just escalate to no end. Okay, so they actually managed to raise up to about $30 billion worth of funds to actually pass it over to First Republic. And that was actually already included into the earnings report itself. Which means if we were to actually exclude what... JP Morgan and all the other big banks, what they actually did together, First Republic would be in the gutters because that means that their, their actual deposit would have actually declined about 50%, which would be somewhere in the northern side of $130 billion. So that was the first thing about First Republic Bank. Now we have to talk about why this would actually be a problem or not be a problem for the whole entire industry. Okay, so during the earnings report, basically First Republic also, uh, you know, kind of uh, allowed us to know all about the amount of uh, fair market value assets they actually had. So apparently, the assets that they were actually holding, the fair market value was not actually fair per se. So for example, just to keep it simpler, uh, you know, with simpler terms for you guys, Okay, it simply means that, you know, they are actually saying that they have $300 billion. An example, again, totally just an example. They have $3 billion or $300 billion worth of assets, for example. Okay, however, that amount of asset would only hold through once they actually get all their loans matured, they get all their assets back. So this could be in a 8-year time horizon, 10-year time horizon, 20-year time horizon, whatever it is. Basically, they were just saying that, yeah, that's the assets that we actually had. But in actual fact, if they were to liquidate every single one of the loans, the deposit, assets, I don't care, liquidate everything, they were actually only left with about $100 billion. Okay, so for example, for this current example, okay, it simply means that the, far, uh, the, the fair market value is actually a lot more deflated than, uh, it's a lot more inflated than uh, the, what they actually uh, say that they actually have. So this is kind of just threw everything out of control. And then this actually created this sort of panic around the regional banks. People started to take all their money out because just because Silicon Bank, uh, Silicon Valley Bank got 
um, built out by the uh, feds does not mean that First Republic has to be built out by the feds. Okay, so earlier on Friday, I believe uh, it was two days before I actually uh, flew, three days before I actually flew back to Singapore, um, I saw that there was a bank, uh, well, there was a bank offering for uh, First Republic. They were actually uh, asking for all the different banks to bid to, a bid to buy over First Republic Bank, which ultimately JP Morgan did, offered to buy up um, First Republic, which kind of helped a little bit on the banking crisis. But this video, again, I just want to explain to you guys why this would not be the end of this whole banking crisis. First of all, I'm pretty sure that you guys already know that I am pretty bearish. Preface. I'm going to preface this pretty hard. I am pretty bearish on the market, but I do not want to be a blind bear. Okay, I, I don't want to be a blind bull. I don't want to be a blind bear. Okay, I'm going to be telling you why. First of all, of course, what happened with First Republic is not exactly uh, something that is evident in the whole entire banking industry. I do understand that that's not the case. However, this panic do actually bring forth a lot of different things. Because we now have to also take into consideration that the debt ceiling is coming down on us again. Well, actually, we are going towards the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling is not really falling. It's just continuously uh, rising. But our head is reaching the debt ceiling yet again. So, of course... You know, Janet Yellen have to find a way to raise the debt ceiling yet again. This is a yearly occurrence, maybe bi-yearly occurrence, whatever it is. Okay, Janet Yellen have to find a way to raise the debt ceiling. So now, if you're thinking about it in that direction, for example, that means the banking industry as a whole, right now, effectively, I believe that your top eight banks, they're going to be quite safe. I do feel that your regional banks are the ones that's going to be suffering for a little bit. Because after what happened with um, First, Signi uh, well, First, Signi First Republic Bank, what actually happens with First Republic Bank actually kind of controls uh, people's emotion with money now. So for example, if you are someone who is a citizen of the United States, you have money in regional banks, chances are you have already withdrew every single cent from those accounts and put it into the top eight banks. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's in JP Morgan, it doesn't matter if it's in the Bank of America, Wells Fargo, you know, Morgan Stanley, whoever it is, you're probably gonna be putting in the top eight banks. You're not gonna be putting it into the top 30 banks, okay? From your 10th to 30th place, those people are gonna be affected as well. And those banks are the one that actually would bring forth this sort of disaster per se. Because the, the 10th place to 30th place, the only way for them to actually shine brighter amongst the, the top eight banks is for them to actually increase the amount of yield they offer their clients. Okay, because let's be honest here, if I am if I have money in First Republic and before, I'm gonna be chugging all my money to JPM. Okay, it's because I want safety for my money. Okay, I want safety for my money, hence I'm gonna put it all into JPM. For example, so let's just say bank ABC, uh, which is currently rank number 12 in the whole entire banking uh, list in terms of market cap and the amount of assets they actually control. Let's just say they're number 12, okay? They're not going to be getting a lot of huge clients because the thing is that only your existing clients is most likely going to be staying with you. Chances are a small percentage of your existing clients is going to be moving to the top eight because they are worried that, oh no, you know, number, number 12 might be in danger as well. Why not move myself to number three, for example? So people are going to get out of Bank ABC, for example, okay? I don't want to name any banks because I don't want to, you know, throw shade or create any unwarranted panic. So I'm just going to use Bank ABC for, for this example over here, okay? So if Bank ABC is going to suddenly have a sudden loss of existing clientele, they're not going to be suddenly getting a new influx of new clientele either because... People who are really in the real level of panic, they're not going to go to number 12. They're going to go to number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let alone number 8. People are going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so the only way for them to actually bring in more customers, bring in more investors, bring in more depositors, is for them to actually include higher yield, better products, better discounts, you know, better services, better benefits in general. This is a service uh, you know, this is a whole entire service-oriented industry, which means that you need good numbers. 
Okay, so for example, if JPM is going to be offering you 2% per year on your deposits, for example, okay, you might have to give 2.5, okay, or you might have to give 3% for people to actually think about putting money with you. Otherwise, you're actually just losing out to your competitors. Because for example, if JPM is doing 2% and you are doing 2%, Chances are people are not going to put money with you because if JPM is going to be offering me 2%, they are so big that they can't fail. I would have a better shot putting it with JPM, personally thinking, okay? Which is why I do think that this might actually spread out a little bit more, which means you're number 12, number 13, number 14. These banks are going to start to see a little bit of a uh, deflation of in, well, basically uh, income and also depositors, investors, things like that. Okay, and that's going to slowly spread into the other trinkets of your different economies. Okay, so for example, companies who are actually borrowing money from all these different 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 banks, okay, for example, they are also starting to think that, you know, oh, okay, you know, after seeing what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, maybe we should, you know, think twice, okay, and this is where the big money actually moves, okay? When companies start to move, that's where the big money moves, okay? Because for you and I, for example, we're not going to be controlling millions and billions of dollars, for example, okay? It's the companies that are going to be holding millions and billions of dollars. They, When they move, the banks are going to try their absolute best to hold them and that bank. And I think that they might not be able to do so. Okay, or at least they are not able to do so without getting that big of a cut on their income. Okay, and when banks start to miss on their earnings, it means that all your tech company start to miss on earnings, or your uh well your consumer discretionary gonna start missing on earnings as well, and that's kind of gonna you know kind of tri uh trickle out a little bit. Of course, I'm not saying that this is going to be the end all be all and have a whole uh, 2008 financial crisis all over again. I don't think that would be the case. Personally, I think that it would be more like a very, very mild uh, recession because right now a lot of people are starting to think that, oh, you know, maybe a recession might not be coming anymore. Okay, personally, I still think a recession is going to come. That's the funniest thing about a recession because it will not come if everyone thinks it's going to come. But it will come when people start to think it will not come. That's how recession is because it is feeding on people's complacency effectively. I believe so. Okay. So try not to spend as much money, I guess. You know, I, I, I don't think that it's going to be affecting uh, everyone as much. Uh, I do think that, you know, it's better for everyone to basically just uh, keep on, uh, you know, keeping cash, keeping uh, cash heavy would uh, definitely be uh, the most important. But yeah, I do think that, you know, this banking, this, uh, this whole banking crisis explosion, uh, definitely is something for us to actually look into. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'll probably talk more about all the different news that actually happened in the past week. Um, you know, and then I'll kind of just explain uh, them in the next few videos. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.